Howdy folks, look what we got in today. It is all of the Bloomboro, so much. So we had, let's talk about Bloomboro, how my orders came at first. This was a very low ordered set when I first put this out for pre-orders. And then when spoiler season started happening, oh my goodness, did the orders really pick up. So there's some good news and bad news about of course, magic. We're still not back to like the regular, I think people are just so hesitant right now. They actually want to see the contents of a set before uh, people go all in or, or really commit to pre-orders. So we're still reeling from the not good old days, the battle days of Baldur's Gate, where people feel like they get hoodwinked by a name of a set. And then, so I, I don't know how the solution to this. I think the Wizard of the Coast should spoil cards a little bit sooner and that would take a lot of pressure off of the and maybe they don't want to do it maybe this is their strategy of, of being like okay we got to give some sort of uh mystery of what's going to be in the set but the problem that i'm having right now with this market is people have just been trained to only want to purchase things they know are going to be good purchases or at least they have more info and i don't blame the consumer for that because of all of the things that wizard of the coast has done like even commander masters uh, end up being a lackluster set, comparatively speaking, to the price that they wanted to uh, charge for Commander Masters. And Assassin's Creed, I saw the same hesitancy with people wanting to order it, and then by the time uh, people wanted it, then pre-orders were already done. So that's kind of what we're dealing here with, with Magic the Gathering. Uh, thankfully, I have a really good relationship with this distributor, and they their sales were incredibly slow at first as well. So they were able to give me a lot more product after I requested it you know, last minute. However, that is not the case that I've had before in the past. So a little bit of warning to people that do do pre-orders. Do -do, do -do pre um, I don't know. I, I, I think that Duskmorn is going to be... My, my numbers for Duskmorn are super low. So if... Yes, collectors are always Zach's talking, so we'll show Zach. Sorry. So, so play boosters are massive, like 200. Okay. Well, everybody and their dog wants to play the next set. Nobody... I don't have anybody that really cares about this set. They, like, Zach, people care easy. about this set. It's... Well, okay. <laughs> those... Yeah. So yes, locally, maybe are not. But And there's good right. commander cards in here. Everybody wants to and play well, like I said, it was when people saw spoilers when the orders really started to come in. So okay. anyway, Dustmorn, yeah. Dustmorn's weird because I can never, ever get my... Get the handle on Wiz of the Coast where... You know, one set they allocate a ton, and then the next set they allocate half, and and or one set they they allocate a ton of collectors boosters, and the next set they allocate. I'm telling you, my play boosters are basically you can you can order to your heart's content with play boosters and collectors. And I, again, I actually think this is going to be a good thing because this is where I want Wizards of the Coast to go back. I know that people are going to be upset with collectors boosters, maybe uh, having a higher price point, but they need at least one product that that. Um, the stores can actually make money on. And if you look at like the new Capena era and the Baldur's Gate era, and even up to Wildsville Drain, Wildsville Drain was selling under distributor cost on TCG Player for weeks after the release of it. And I think it was mainly due to the fact that people thought that Wildsville Drain collectors would just be huge print run. And then when they figured out that the print runs of Ixalan and Wildsville Drain were not nearly as high, as previous sets, then the prices of those went crazy. So if you actually look at Wilds of Dream collectors and you look at Ixalan collectors, they are expensive now. Are they still approaching 300 bucks for Wilds of Dream and, yes. and Ixalan? And both of those, again, were under distributor cost, like right after, I think Ixalan was, was right at distributor cost. And what, what, why I keep talking about distributor cost is stores lose money, basically. If by the time you put your time and effort into um, acquiring and most stores are in the same position we are that we have to directly compete with online so most people are knowledgeable the vast majority of people that come into stores now are knowledgeable about tcg player they're knowledgeable about online prices and they're going to price shop they're going to be loyal to their wallet yes you have the customers that are loyal uh, what we actually find out is mostly people are more loyal to buying a pack or two here but if it's going to be a big purchase they're definitely going to try to shop where it's gonna save them the most money. And so once you're at the distributor cost level, stores just absolutely lose their, their shirt on these type of stuff. And so I actually do like the, um, the transition of, of less collector's booster. I think if one thing is smart to, to lower the product, the, the print, and again, I'll argue with people on YouTube all day long that Wizards of the Coast needs to, to, and other TCGs, not just Wizards, Pokemon especially, and uh, 
even flesh and blood, Lorcana, Lorcana's last set was really worrisome. However, I do need to do a video on Lorcana. Uh, a guy came in the other day to buy Lorcana singles from us. I just have, a, I open up a few boxes every set just to play with friends. And I was looking up cards that were worth nothing back when I were looking them up at the pre-release. That set has gone nuts. What is up with Lorcana? I guess with this championship coming up, it's just led to a lot of people buying cards. So uh, I wonder if the EV is actually uh, actually, the expected value of Lorcana boxes from Floodborne Eclans is actually makes sense to open. Anyway, I digress. That's a whole nother thing. But uh, what, what we're seeing, though, with print runs is they still need to tighten belts. And Modern Horizons 3, I thought, was really going to lead us back into a bear. So it's very encouraging seeing Bloomboro have the sales it has. However, right now in TC Player, again, there's very razor-thin margins between the distributor costs on all these products and the uh, cost or and, and how much is going for on tissue players so again stores that do both or have to do both or have to rely if it doesn't sell locally to be able to to dump it out on tcg player they need to be above 15 percent usually of distributor cost versus tcg player to just break even and that's just talking about all the time wasted i know this is a game this is just a only a game store now it's just you know playing the the cash flow game of just blowing everything out, going to the next product, hopefully a product is going to give you good margins. But if you have a bunch of sneaker sets in a row, then it's very, very tough to reinvest and actually pay your overhead and pay your employees and everything like that. So anyway, Blue Bro, we got a lot to actually do here. As you see, we have a Dr. Pepper that's just randomly just waiting to be spilled on everyone's product. That's mine though, I shouldn't blame. Him. <laughs> I was gonna say. And and then we we have all, like I said, a lot of the pretty healthy amount of commander decks are ordered. That's a this is a product that I'm I'm very bullish on. So um I've been noticing that the play boosters and draft boosters and even set boosters are kind of the worst products to hold long term. If you could do things like bundles and you do commander decks and collector boosters, that's where the long term holds seem to be. So I am liking these things. I used to be like this was just me taking numbers from distributors, and we were losing money on all of these these commander decks from like uh, Kamigawa era. Kamigawa was one that was really horrible. Like the 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 value in them was terrible, and the sales were awful. If you actually look at TC Player, and as I showed in my last video, it's the vast majority of our sales are from you know, casual players that just want to pick up a box commander set. And I think it's the same kind of culture online that you have a lot of people that are just too lazy to build commander decks, or I wouldn't even call it lazy. It's just more convenient to have a baseline. It's like, oh, I already need these lands for a deck. Oh, this, this deck has it and just purchase it. And so that's got like, I, I talk so much and even Rudy the video making fun of me because <laughs> I'm the only one on YouTube that I know says the word utility. So that, you know, utility is so king in this industry. So if you have something that people actually want to play with rather than collect, if they want to actually have a starting base to work off of, then that's gonna be above and beyond. That's all why I was so uh, kind of butthurt when set boosters came out because I didn't think that they differentiated enough from draft, but you couldn't draft them. So it was like a double dipping problem of here's another product that is, is directly competing and not, you know, there's not enough difference to justify its existence and it has more value in it than draft boosters, but it doesn't have utility. So then you get this double whammy of people not wanting to buy draft or draft. They don't want to participate in drafts because set booster is just a better bang for your buck. And then you don't have the utility being purchased for the drafts um, for you know set boosters. So I'm glad we're back in the play, play booster era. But again, things that I think that are great uh, long-term uh, bundles, collectors, commander decks, I think are still a better bet over play boosters. And couple that fact with now it looks like print runs are being reduced in those areas and being increased in play boosters so it really seems like they just took draft boosters and set boosters and and the the amount they printed for those they just squashed them together for play boosters and so that's going to lead to a lot of play boosters on the market so uh, it'll be interesting to see long term how play boosters and versus set booster draft booster is is going to uh, pan out uh, but you know that's that's me typically i try to buy as many bundles as possible because they are things that sell if you look like kamigawa bundles for example they sell for quite the pretty penny compared to like kamigawa set boosters or draft boosters so anyway i think that's all we have going here my dogs are super super bored and i have a, of course a ton of orders out unfortunately it's a utah holiday here so a lot of the shipping companies and stuff have skeleton clues so i doubt that ups is going to show up to pick things up and and yeah we're gonna have to just get this out uh, for tomorrow so oh that's that's one of the i see all these people have been opening up product for uh this the set bloomer already and got everything like ready to go unfortunately when you live so close to distributor they just do two days before like distributors and wizards they only have to get you the product before 
uh, pre-release so that you can have it in stock for stores and then it kind of makes it a mess for me trying to get in people's hands by release. But anyway, that's all I have for today. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy this video. I'll, I'll try to keep pumping out this content and talking shop here since you guys seem to be enjoying this type of off the cuff type of videos. As always, thanks for watching.